Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. meeting of the Greater Beaumont Chamber of Commerce. At this time, I would like to uh, ask Reverend Patricia Ritter Ritchie to come forward and offer an invocation. Thank you. It's nice to be here with the chamber and especially joyful to be here on this night when my family um, and their businesses are being honored. Let us pray. Mighty God, you created the heavens and the earth and all that lives upon the earth. And then you created man and charged us with the care of all living things. You gave us work to do that we might be stewards of this earth. We thank you for this Chamber of Commerce and the guidance it gives our community and for its faithful leaders and members who give of their time and talent to assure that our community prospers. We give thanks for those honored tonight, for their contribution to the community and their example of integrity and collaboration. Lord, lead us along the path of truth. Make us a people eager to walk humbly and do justice in all things. Guide us in a concern for the common good as we seek to assure that Beaumont is a thriving community where there is ample opportunity for all. Where we all can have pride in what we do and receive a just return for our labor. And where we work together not for our own reward, but for your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Ritchie. This evening, uh, we're especially proud to have uh, many honored guests. I ask that you uh, hold your applause as we attempt to get everyone introduced. First of all, the family of our outgoing chairman, Chuck Kalkbrenner, his wife, Tanya Kalkbrenner, his daughter, Kate Leverett, and her husband, Stephen. We're especially honored to have with us the Speaker of the Texas House of, of Representatives, Representative Joe Strauss. We have our newest state senator here, Brandon Creighton. We also have other members of the House, including Dennis Bonin, Bonin from Angleton, Byron Cook from Corsicana, Jim Keffer from Eastland, John Otto from Dayton, Wayne Smith from Baytown, James White from Hillister. Let me stop there and offer these state officials a big round of applause. Now here's where my notes uh, might, might be a challenge. I did notice former state representative Ron Lewis here. Uh, our University of Texas State Chancellor and former House member Brian McCall. I didn't see, but I expected Jeff Mosley, who is a commissioner with TxDOT. Let me also at this point acknowledge our Jefferson County Judge, Jeff Brannick, and our great mayor, the Mayor of Beaumont, Becky Ames. Now let's give them all a round of applause. We have a number of outstanding uh, city and county officials. I did see uh, Port Natchez Mayor Glenn Johnson here. I want to shout out to him. But any other uh, local uh, elected official, uh, would you please stand here and let us all applause you at once. Please stand. We're here to conduct the uh, annual meeting of the Greater Beaumont Chamber of Commerce. 
And we, we have to admit it's been a very eventful year. Many, many highs and some lows. Tonight we celebrate some accomplishments that we want to show to you to illustrate our progress. We've prepared a short video that il illustrates some of the highlights of the year. Under the leadership of Chairman of the Board, Chuck Kochbrenner, the Greater Beaumont Chamber of Commerce made the Chamber year 2013-2014 an outstanding one. For the first time in its history, the Chamber has earned designation as a five-star accredited Chamber, representing the top 1% of Chambers in the United States. With nearly 7,000 Chambers in the United States, accreditation with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce distinguishes the Greater Beaumont Chamber's high quality, expertise, and strong leadership. Chamber President Jim Rich received the prestigious Marvin Hurley Award from the Texas Association of Chambers of Commerce, and the Chamber fulfilled its mission with continued advocacy for area business. Milestones included WRDA passage, deepening authorization, expanding area industry including Nat Gasoline, the largest new investment in Beaumont's history, oil tanking XL Systems, Major expansions including those at the Port of Beaumont and m and Electric, three new banks, and multiple other commercial projects, and continued advocacy for the Golden Pass and Chenier LNG projects. Internally, the Chamber completed a successful business development week, sustained membership recruitment and retention with 115 new members, sponsorships totaling $325,000, vibrant leadership Beaumont and mentorship programs, creation of the Young Professionals of Southeast Texas 40 and under 40 recognitions, contribution to the Hotel and Water Park Economic Impact Study, the sustaining of a viable airline, and last but not least, final payment on the Chamber Build Mortgage. We now own our home. Not a bad year, right? Many of you know our outgoing chairman of the board, Chuck Galkbrenner, spearheaded much that occurred this past year. But on a day, uh, July 11th, our world kind of stopped. Uh, he suffered cardiac arrest, and uh, we we were, you know, in prayer for weeks as he recovered, and he's still recovering. Unfortunately, uh, Chuck cannot be with us tonight. Uh, those of you that know, we had a big event Saturday night uh, to help support the family financially, and that was a huge success. And I'm not, not going to steal any uh, thunder from the family, but let's do a round of applause for anybody that had any connection with what happened on Saturday night. There were over 700 people in attendance, and uh, it was a very successful fundraiser. So, what we want to do now is to ask uh, Chuck's uh, lovely daughter, Kate, to come forward and accept what would have been the uh, outgoing uh, presentation we would have made to Chuck. So, a warm round of applause for Kate Leverett. I'm honored to accept this on behalf of my dad, Chuck Cockburner. He thoroughly enjoyed serving you all as the chairman of the Beaumont Chamber of Commerce and also serving you to help this wonderful community thrive. Thank you. Now it's time for me to introduce our incoming chairman, someone who doesn't need much of an introduction. He helped fill in since July. He's a former mayor of Beaumont, a very successful attorney, and he's our new, our new board chairman. Please welcome Guy Goodson. Good evening. The rich history 
of the Greater Beaumont Chamber of Commerce has mark, been marked by one thing above all else, and that is the leadership of some extraordinary men and women. Um, I am humbled by the opportunity to follow in their very, very large footsteps. Uh, among the leaders that have populated this chairmanship include many men and women that are in the audience tonight, but there's one individual that tonight, because of the Spindletop Award and the special relationship that he has with the Ritters, as well as his extraordinary leadership as chairman of the Beaumont Chamber, we're gonna ask for an individual to come up who not only was chairman at the time I was mayor during that little event known as Hurricane Rita, but because of the challenges that were brought on at that particular juncture in this community's history, he was asked and without a blink agreed to extend his term for an additional year to make certain there was no breaches in the leadership that would need, be needed to lead this community back to the place where we were able to achieve. He served with distinction on our Greater Beaumont Chamber of Government Affairs and led the Transportation Division. Jim and I would therefore like to ask former Chairman of the Board, Sonny Sherman, to please come forward for that we might bestow upon him the recognition as an honorary lifetime chamber member. Well, I can say I'm so pleased that to be acknowledging of all the things we did do for the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, most people don't realize just how many things go on at that chamber, but day in and day out, uh, they're the lifeblood of the whole area. And uh, I really enjoy it. If you ever get an opportunity to serve on the board, I certainly would ask that you do that because you'll be getting way more out of it than you put into it. I'll guarantee you that. But thanks a million for the uh, recognition, and uh, I'll cherish it forever. Thank you. As all of you know, we are here tonight to uh, recognize a family and a business that literally has helped construct the very fabric of this community for the last 67 years. There's a lot of reasons why uh, Ritter Lumber Company and the extended River uh, Ritter family would be selected to receive the Spindletop Award for Corporate Citizenship, but we would like to share with you a short video of a little of the family history and the business, so please uh, roll the video. B.A. Ritter and his partner, W.K. McCauley, founded McCauley Ritter Lumber Company in 1947 primarily is a contractor-oriented business. Subsequently, B.A. and his son, James P. Ritter, purchased Macaulay's interest in the prosperous business and it became Ritter Lumber Company. My family's business has been around about 65 years now and um, to have watched it grown over the years from a little basically one room uh, retail hardware store with a little lumber out in the yard that my grandparents start until you know what we have today with with Ritter Lumber Company and Ritter Forest Products we now have uh, 10 operations in Texas Louisiana and actually one up in Illinois um, it, it's really kind of mind-blowing uh, I sit back sometimes and wonder what my grandparents would think of what this company is now from what uh, they started and basically uh, uh, handed over to their three grandsons and team. 
the partners purchased the George C. Bone Company warehouse and built a small showroom in Nederland. Known Allen for many years. He's been a very special friend to me. You know, he's been an extremely effective leader in Southeast Texas and an extremely effective advocate in Austin, a guy who knows his way around the halls of the Capitol, a guy who knows who's here to bend, and certainly uh, the person I credit most for cementing what I think is the uh, future success of the Texas economy by passage of the water legislation that uh, is uh, so critically important uh, that I don't really think its importance can be overstated. Jim Ritter Jr. became active in the business while attending Lamar University. In the 70s, Allen, James, and John earned their degrees at Lamar and joined the firm. While the Ritters built their business in the Nederland area, another lumber company was thriving in Beaumont. C.L. Sherman & Son was the primary competitor for the Ritters. I always had a lot of respect for the Ritters. Uh, they had a lumber yard in Nederland and had a lumber yard on Washington Boulevard. Both of us had good businesses. Uh, the economy was great after the war. We could sell about all the stuff we wanted to sell. Um, we were competitors all week long. Uh, but on weekends, uh, we loved to go fishing together. I had a boat and we'd go 40 miles offshore and take Doc Ritter with us. And uh, uh, it was funny, funny. We were competitors during the week and best friends on Saturday. In 1985, the Ritters established a new division called Ritter Forest Products to market specialty products to pipeline, waterfront, and underground contractors. And he was a stock market guy. He was one of the most brilliant. Uh, he was a dentist before that. Doc Ritter, that's reason they call him Doc Ritter. He was a dentist. And um, when he went to fill a tooth for years, his thumb was about about that big around. <laughs> and when he opens your mouth, put your thumb in, ain't room for anything else. <laughs> and so then we were dumb enough to go down to, to South America. We got eight people to go together to go down there. And that was the most exciting thing I've ever done and most exp expensive thing I've ever done too, going up and down the river. So we started singing that song, Phil Sherman and Son, 3010 Amazon. <laughs> Allen was elected to the Texas House of Representatives in 1998 and began a distinguished record of service to this area and to the state of Texas. His House colleagues elected Representative Ritter Freshman of the Year in 1999. In that same year, the Ritters acquired the assets of C.L. Sherman and & Son, and C.L. Sonny Sherman became a consultant for the company. As a result of that, whenever I sold out to the Ritters, uh, the bank asked me to be a consultant for them. In fact, they insisted on it for a year, and I've been doing it now for about 10 or 15 years, I guess. Uh, but they're a great, good bunch of people, and it's good. it was good for both of us. So I've retired now, basically, but I still go down there every Monday, Monday morning for five hours and get the price of all the lumber and all the plywood in Texas and put it in a computer, and I don't know what happened to it after that. <laughs> but uh, they take over from there, but it's been a... It's been great to work with them. They're, they're good people. In 2002, the company became known as Triple R Brothers Limited and continued its expansion. With the business running smoothly, Allen continued his service in the Texas House, earning the gratitude of his district and distinguishing himself as an expert legislator and peacemaker. We needed to get some legislation uh, passed in Austin to modernize the uh, Navigation District, and uh, we called on Allen, and he, together with the delegation from our area, got in there and got the uh, navigation passed. I think Allen is uh, the ideal uh, legislator. Uh, he works with either party just uh, instinctively seems to do the right thing. Alan Ritter has been a, a great friend for the water industry across Texas. And his, his reputation across the state has been that he listens to people's problems. And you may not always get what you ask for out of him, uh, but he'll, you can 
be assured he'll always be fair about, about it and try to do what's best for the state of Texas. And boy, when the water shortage hit us, and Alan jumped in there and he was, what's the Corps giving us? How much support? How much money do we need? Where's the riprap? Are they hauling it now? How quick are we going to get recovery? Are we going to get recovery? What are we doing on conservation? Big effort on conservation. And when we put the saltwater barrier in, he was instrumental in helping us get that done. Had we had not built the saltwater barrier and had it in place, that drought would have been a lot worse than it was. This year, Representative Ritter was selected the Texas Water Foundation Rainmaker Award and announced his retirement from the House of Representatives. Today, the Ritter family's multiple businesses include Ritter Lumber and Ritter Forest Products. They contribute to our local economy and display exemplary corporate citizenship throughout the areas they serve. So it's been, um, it's been a, uh, a, a wonderful, wonderful 40 years for me and my brothers and actually my whole family. And this has been a family operation. You know, we're, uh, we're, we're hoping there's gonna be a lot more years. Throughout the years, the family-owned business has made it a point to instill family values in the workplace service to the community, Southeast Texas, and the state are all part of the Ritter family tradition and the keys to their success. It uh, comes as no surprise to uh, anyone in this room that uh, Alan Ritter is a special person. I kidded Alan because we have a little history that goes back a fairly long way and the sort of the political comings and goings of Southeast Texas. And in 1999, he stood as the brand new elected state representative from our district with the only small problem is that he followed a fella named Mark Stiles, who had been a fairly successful representative for our area, chairing the calendars uh, committee and cutting a wide swath in Austin, most of it for us. And all Alan did, as you just heard, is come in and be elected by his peers as the outstanding freshman legislator, legislator in the House. Why did Alan get that prestigious award? Why was he named by our uh, speaker and others uh, to prestigious committee appointments, including his leadership so successfully on the House Natural Resource Commission Committee is because of what Alan is. And, it, and you heard it up there said by other leaders greater than me, Alan's a great listener. He will give you what he can, and he always tells the truth. When you do that in the Texas legislature, an interesting thing happens. You actually can make friends. <laughs> and uh, friendships, uh, and I'm privileged to have known a lot of the members of the House over my years, is uh, they become to count on you, and that's what these members that are here, that are friends and colleagues are here, or to let you all know is that uh, that's what he means to them and what he means to someone like our speaker, the Honorable Joe Strauss. We need to really thank uh, the speaker for coming down here and taking time out of his extraordinarily busy schedule on the cusp of another legislative session and that also of all of our members of the House. But uh, Chairman Strauss was elected in 2005 and his mantra in Austin has been to champion physical responsibility, making our state live within its means. He has led in passing a budget, cutting total spending by more than $14 billion. He's one of the only legislatures to actually wipe a tax off the books. He is serving in his third term as uh, chairman, having been initially elected in 2009, 11 and 13 by unanimous vote. Doesn't take much to check the House Journal to find out how many unanimous votes they have. And that is extraordinary. And I applaud the chairman for that. He's passed balanced budgets, cut taxes, reformed education, 
made our state government, along with its leadership, more transparent and efficient. Forbes National Review and the Wall Street Journal agree that our state is the best to do business in. Under the Speaker's leadership, they cut taxes by almost $1.4 billion, and with the help of a guy like Alan Ritter and all the rest of our House members here tonight, we are helping to guarantee our state a long-term water supply for the entire state. He served with distinction in the administrations of Presidents Reagan and Bush. He's a lifelong native of, of San Antonio, and uh, he gets his conservative results through the respectful leadership that he has provided for these last six years. I want to thank our good friend and his, Michael Truncali, for helping facilitate not only the speaker being here today, but enabling him to meet with important members of our community about important projects. And so it is my greatest privilege to welcome the Speaker of the House to Beaumont. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your support for Speaker of the House, the Honorable Joe Strauss. Good evening. Thank you, Guy, very much. I'm very happy to be in Beaumont today. Um, enough about Alan Ritter. <laughs> no, actually, I'm very happy to be here to pay tribute to one of the most remarkable people I've ever known. Um, I know that Alan is humbled and he's honored by the sheer number of people who are here tonight. The size of this crowd shows just how popular a politician can be once he announces he's not running for office again. <laughs> Actually, I know that Alan has always been well liked and deeply respected in this community. And we'll get to that in a minute. But first, I want to say just a couple of words about someone who has played a very important role in Alan's service. And that is, of course, his fantastic wife, Peggy. I can only imagine what putting up with Alan Ritter for all these years is really like. Actually, we only have to put up with him for 140 days every other year. Uh, but Peggy has done so much more than just put up with him. She's been a tremendous uh, source of support and happiness for Alan, and together they have made quite a team. And so, Peggy, I want to thank you not only for sharing Alan with us, but for the countless ways that you've made his service possible. Julie and I are honored to count both of you as very close friends. Now, I know tonight is about honoring Ritter Lumber Company and its many contributions to this region. That impact has indeed been significant. And I know that this award means a great deal to everyone associated with that fine company. But I want to talk a little bit more tonight about Alan Ritter the Texas representative and Texas leader. As tonight's event shows, Allen is a true citizen legislator, which is exactly what the founders of our state envisioned. You may have noticed that he isn't a professional politician or anything even close to that. Rather, he's someone who makes his living here among the people he represents, and he sees his service as a way to give back. It speaks to just how much of an impact Alan has had that so many of his and our colleagues are here and who respect him very, very much. Um, I think uh, Representative John Otto is here from nearby and Representative James White, um, Representative Dennis Bonin, Representative Byron Cook, Representative Wayne Smith, I think, is here, Representative Jim Keffer, Almost Representative Dade Phelan is here, <laughs> and, um, and Senator Creighton. It's been said that when you get this many members of the Texas legislature together in one place, that many a village may be missing its idiot. 
But this is actually a very accomplished group of House members, and it means a lot to me that they're here, and I know it means a lot to Alan Ritter that you're here tonight. Those of us who have served with Alan know a different side of him than many of you do. We know him to be smart. We know him to be plain spoken. We know him to be kind and thoughtful, maybe a little rough around the edges. And we know him to be of high moral character, also sometimes a little foul mouthed. Okay, so maybe we know exactly the same Alan Ritter you know. But he is certainly a different kind of legislator from any that I've ever known. The Texas House is made up of 150 members from all across the state. And every two years, we welcome in at least a couple dozen new members to replace those who aren't coming back, either by their choice or by someone else's. And about a month from now, or a couple of months from now, our newest class will come to Austin to learn about the legislative process and learn about the Capitol itself. And if I could instruct all of them, and Dade, I know you're listening, but if I could instruct all of them to follow the example of just one legislator, it would be Alan Ritter. On the surface, of course, Alan doesn't fit the mold of that modern politician. He isn't going to give you a 30-minute speech to show you how smart he is. He doesn't have perfect hair. <laughs> doesn't have much hair at all. And he neither thinks nor speaks in sound bites. But he is one of the smartest legislators this state has seen in decades. And like many effective leaders through, throughout history, he is often underestimated. Alan likes to describe himself as just an old two by four salesman. But he usually does this right before winning an argument against someone who was foolish enough to actually believe that description. <laughs> He's also really effective because he is genuine. He's that person sitting in a tense meeting who will say what everyone else is thinking, but's afraid, but is afraid to articulate. He's much more worried about hurting this state than he is about hurting your feelings. And this combination of smarts and sincerity have allowed him to build considerable respect among others at the Capitol. Time and again, Alan's younger colleagues have approached him on the House floor for advice on very tough issues. And this is the scene that generally plays out for each of these encounters. Alan will talk to the young legislator, make him or her feel really important and very special, and then leave them with a better understanding of the topic at hand. Then the grateful young colleague will walk away, and Alan will turn to the person next to him and ask, now, who in the hell was that anyway? <laughs> I'm even told that there's some jockeying going on to see who will sit in Alan's desk when he's gone. These, mem these members must think that that desk itself will make them more effective and more respected. And I'm sure that, I'm also sure that whoever moved into J.J. Watt's locker at the University of Wisconsin also believed they'd leave, lead the NFL in sacks too. But of course, it isn't Allen's desk that makes him a great legislator. It's his commitment to his constituents and to his fellow Texans. He knows that public office is a tremendous honor that's given to him by his neighbors, and he has worked every day to earn their trust. He's made a profound difference for this region, but beyond the impact and his legacy, it will, his legacy will actually extend far beyond District 21. He's repeatedly taken on big challenges and consequential issues. And none was more important than Allen's leadership in the last session on the issue of water. Nobody needs me to explain to you how severe our water shortage has been these last few years. Allen has been known to say that sometimes things have to get pretty bad for the legislature to fix them. Actually, he said it more colorfully than that, but you get the idea. 
By the time the legislature met in 2013, our water situation was well past pretty bad. An ongoing drought had put a tremendous strain on our water supply for our industries, for our farmers, for homeowners and families up and down the streets in our neighborhoods. And that strain was even felt here in Southeast Texas, which some thought was always gonna be immune to drought. Of course, we had the beginnings of a solution. For decades, we'd had a state water plan, a guide for addressing our shortage and giving Texas access to the water that it needs. And that plan has been updated every five years. But there was never a plan to implement it or to fund it. And as a result, population growth and the punishing drought made our, our water crisis worse and worse. A couple of years ago, Allen saw that the time had come and got to work on a creative, practical solution to fund our state's water plan. He developed the concept of, of a revolving fund to provide startup money for needed projects across Texas. He worked closely with industry, and farmers, and environmentalists to build the support for such an approach. And there were moments when failure seemed likely. And he had one tortured metaphor after a particularly bad day on the Texas House floor when Allen pronounced his bill dead as a doorknob. But he, but he revived it and he built a coalition of Republicans and Democrats to stand behind his idea. Now you might say Allen is the perfect person to work with members who are Republicans and Democrats. It helps when you've been a member of each party. <laughs> but, but Allen built that coalition because the other legislators respected his word and his judgment. And he took the time to personally explain his idea to any member who would listen. And he won over almost every single one of them. And ultimately, his water legislation passed both the House and in the Senate convincingly. And then it was approved by 73% of the voters in this state. Now, a year later, our water challenges haven't gone away. But thanks to Allen's work, communities are much, much closer to having the water that they need. And our economy is positioned for continued success. This is the kind of impact that every legislator hopes for, but very few achieve. It's the kind of impact that makes Texas a better place for all of our families. And that's exactly what you elected Alan Ritter to do. I want to thank Alan for his stewardship, for his leadership, and especially for his friendship. Serving with him has been one of the great honors of my life. And I want to thank the Beaumont community for inviting my colleagues and me to share a very special evening with all of you. And most of all, I want to thank you for electing time and time again such a remarkable man. Thank you all very, very much again for allowing me to be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Ritter family is well represented by all the Ritter brothers and their sister Pat, who is my deacon and has to take care of my, uh, uh, my, my walk through faith every day. So I appreciate her, of course, being here. And um, as usual, as it happens in all families, it falls to the eldest brother to come up and receive this award and to speak for the family. So it is now my great pleasure to introduce the president of Ritter Lumber Company and our state representative, Chairman Alan Ritter. Please come up. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I feel a little bit like a poor man's Vanna White. Uh, you sure the, look like the little one is for you, the big one's for the family. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is to you, Alan, for your extraordinary service uh, and your family's extraordinary contribution uh, to the community and, of course, then um, it is with the greatest uh, privilege that I, as the incoming chairman and Jim, as president of the Greater Beaumont Chamber of Commerce, give to uh, the Ritter family and Ritter Lumber Company the Spindletop Award. So thank you all so much for everything you do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Guy, my former mayor. Um, I was going to tell you I was going to be speechless, but I'm not. <laughs> I, uh, I looked over at the table when uh, Strauss was speaking, and my brother kind of gave me a nod and said, what kind of BS is he throwing out? So, uh, <laughs> uh, but Mr. Speaker, thank you. Uh, I, I, I can't tell you how much your friendship has meant to me and uh, over the years and there are all the members that are here and former members, uh, Brian McCall who is our chancellor of our system, who is a member that I served with and, and uh, for quite a few years a dear friend and I want to introduce all of them, y'all have already been introduced but uh, I tell you how important this is to me, Jim Keffer and his lovely wife Leslie, John and Nancy Otto, Byron and Kay Cook, uh, Wayne and Brenda Smith are here, uh, James White was here, uh, Brian McCall, former member, Brandon Creighton, my senator. Um, these guys are, are such good friends. Oh, where's Dennis? My desk mate. One of the best debaters in the whole world, the Tasmanian devil, Dennis Bonin. <laughs> great, great guy. But let me tell you about these people. And, and I kind of look at these people as my family and in a way it uh, will all kind of mesh together. Because in my family, uh, we were raised uh, not about us, one individual, but about us. Not about each one of us, but about us. My grandmother, Danny Price Ritter, who was one of the toughest ladies I've ever been around, uh, she had a way of doing business, and you did it, hell, you did it her way. That's just how simple it was. Customer service, take care of it, and mark it up good. <laughs> and nowadays in the retail business, it's customer service, but they don't let you mark it up as good. So, Anyway, but she always... Um, and my grandfather Booty, and my parents, uh, about us. It's about us. The Beaumont Chamber, it's about us. Southeast Texas, it's about us. Today we had a lunch with the speaker, and we had uh, people from Orange County, Jefferson County, Hardin County. I think one was from Chambers, and one from, was from Polk County. You know what? That's us. My good friend Judge Brannick, he gets it. Well, these members that are here that we debated and we fought and we worked our tails off for years on so many issues, all of these members, it was about us. It was about we Texans. Joe Strauss, as speaker, he gets it. It's about us. Let's do the right thing. Let's do the debate. Let's follow the process. And it, gentlemen, it has been such an honor to serve with y'all. I love each and every one of you with all my heart. I wish you all the best in the future, but I'm glad I ain't going to be there. <laughs>
My family, my family is very special to me, my lovely wife, all our children. We, tonight we only have one, uh, Whitney's here. The other ones are working for a living, Whitney. I don't mean that derogatorily, <laughs> but you know, they all have jobs. My, my sweet sister who y'all met, um, thank you, Pat, for being Pat. Uh, I know you caught hell all your life with three brothers, but hey, we didn't know better. My, uh, my very good friend, Sonny Sherman, who in so many ways has been a mentor to me, not only in the retail business, but about, in, about community service, about us, about working together for the good of our community, for our state, about being vocal when it's time to be vocal, about shutting up when it's time to shut up. And that's hard for a lot of people to do. Um, I thank you, Sonny and Dorothy. I love y'all with all my heart. You've been very, very, very special friends to me and my family, and I'm sorry I caught more fish to you than you did every time we went fishing. But the main thing, the most important thing, and this ties in with all that I've said, is our family. Uh, the good Lord has just looked upon our family so vastly to have the brothers and people, Garth Brentlinger, who and Terry, who are, he's like a brother to us. Uh, we've worked together. Uh, Chad Bromley's here who runs our Beaumont store. I don't know who else is here because I can't see that good. But it's about us. The one thing that I will never ever forget from my grandparents is about us doing what is best for all of us, even if it really isn't the very best thing for me. But thank you for this recognition. Thank you for this recognition for my family. It is such an honor to work with the Ritter family. Uh, and it's been, thank you for allowing me to go to Austin to do this job on behalf of the people of District 21 in Southeast Texas. Folks, you can't do it. You cannot go do that job without the support of your family because it don't pay enough. Thank you much and God bless you all. Thank you. All right, please. One great final applause for a wonderful family and a great business. The Ritters, please. Where is my, I want, I would like everyone to grab their glass. As many know about me, I don't drink on school nights, so uh, I don't get to raise my glass, but I would like everyone to raise their glass in honor of a great family and a great business in Southeast Texas to Ritter family, all the best. Hear, hear. And a final thank you to each one of you who are here tonight. Each of you is a special person too, to the Greater Beaumont Chamber of Commerce. And I want to thank you for what all of you do. And again, I want to thank the speaker, the members of the Texas House for being here. It was truly our honor to have you in Beaumont. Thank you again. And the annual meeting is adjourned.